Hello, my name is Tineke Rensen, and today I'm going to explain to you a lot of things you might not know about water. And I'm not going to explain anything about me now. I'll tell you my story at some point in the presentation, and then it makes sense. But I'll start with giving you all the information I have gathered and I have experienced through water. And I can guarantee you, if you will ever look at water after this presentation, you will never be able to look at, look at it at the same way, the same way you do now. So let's begin. Have you ever wondered why you feel so energized after you had a shower or a swim? I'm just going to pause a bit. And there's no need uh, giving me the answer now. Uh, you can guess I'm going to give you the answer. But it's remarkable what water has been doing for you in your life already. But whilst you now become conscious of it, what it may even do for you in the future. It's remarkable. It really is remarkable. So some people can see nature this way. This is what nature would look like if you would look through a different lens. Some people see it this way. They see all the energy, all the beauty, well, we can see the beauty, of course, but when you can also see the energy like this, it's magnificent. It's overwhelming. But we, with the eyes we have, the body we have, at the moment, living in the 3D world, at the vibrational level that we are living in this world, we're not able to see it this way, unless you gravitate to another dimension. But that is not where this story is about today. But I want you to understand that if you don't see things, it doesn't mean it's not there. It is. And I'm sure you know or are familiar with the fact that when you go and have a walk in the forest, that afterwards you'll feel different. You'll feel energized. This is the reason why. Because nature is energy. There's energy everywhere and everything is connected, as you can see here, with the trees, with the water, with the flowers, with the sky, with the moon, everything. And the same happens when you go swimming in water. You might have noticed. So what is water? Water consists out of two molecule, molecules, hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. That's what we can measure. That's what we can see when we put water under a, a glass under the microscope. But there's something else, and that is energy. It's not a substance. It doesn't have a formula. We cannot, well, we can't see it because we can see the atoms uh, and the molecules vibrating and moving in a speck of water, in a drip, drip of water. That's energy. But we cannot measure, as far as I'm aware of, as far as I know, how much energy and what the energy will do for you and how much energy and what kind of energy we need. So that's something for the future for scientific, scientific people to research. So water absorbs energy from the sun and from the moon. That is the energy water has. And it makes sense eh? because water is responding towards these two Earth's energy, especially to the moon. We have tide, ebb, and flood. And that is 
every six hours, it starts to change. So twice a day, you have ebb and flood. It takes six hours and then six hours to go down, six hours to stay still, six hours to go up. So every 24 hours, you have twice up and twice flood. And all of that is because of the magnetic pull of the moon towards the water. So water should have a magnetic energy. Otherwise, it won't respond to the moon. Can you see that? And the same happens with the sun. So water is already energized with moon and sun energy. That's important to know. We don't see it, but it is how nature functions. It is how water functions. So unfortunately, it can also absorb other energies or frequencies the frequency of satellite communication it's everywhere around us cell phones when you talk on your phone when you have your phone in your pocket people put uh, women put them here it radiates i've seen pictures of women with breast cancer of the size of a phone um air pollution also has an effect on the substance of the chemical substance of water. Satellite communication can change it, but it is a kind of frequency. It is not a substance. Air pollution is a substance. Nuclear radiation, radar communication, and chemicals. Uh, and usually they come through pipe systems that flow into our water earth systems and that is something that we can measure with the current research technology so what is coherent water and what is incoherent water here you see two forms of water on the left hand side you see incoherent water you see the molecules at the h2o they're just moving around, moving around, and they're twisting and turning in all kinds of directions. There's no harmony in how they move, how they position towards one another. And on the right-hand side, you see coherent water. You can see that all the mo molecules are in, exact, in a harmonious way and behaving in a harmonious state and communicating towards one another. Now, everything in nature wants and is, is striving for being coherent. So is our body. As soon as nature is disturbed, hey, and hey, our body is nature, we are nature, we're part of nature, as soon as it is disturbed, it's not coherent anymore. But once it is coherent, it is how it's designed to be by nature. And then everything can communicate with one another. Now that is an important thing to realize. What would happen if your body would be in a coherent state. And you can communicate with everything, everybody, everything around you. So we are water. Well, you must know that. Huh? And figures say that we're 70% water. So 70% actual water in our body. And then there's more because there's a lot of substances in our body that also carry part of water. So we, it's safe to say that 90% of our body is water. And our body and the water in our body wants to be in a coherent state. It is when it functions best. 
It's when you feel abundant. It's when things start to show up. It's when these eases fade away from your body. It is the natural state of nature. Now, I've known a lot about water and I have been in water a lot. Water has always fascinated me because of the fact that I um, have been, or still are a bit, a whitewater kayaker. I used to have a business around whitewater kayaking. So I had a water sports business. It was a means of making my living. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a person, I remember a lot of facts. I remember a lot of interesting things. And I knew a lot about water. And a couple of months ago, I started to connect all that knowledge that I have and all these people I've studied around water. And some beautiful things happened. And I will, I will explain to you later. So first of all, on the left, you'll see the Japanese guy, Masaru Emoto. He found out that water has an emotion. He found out that we can charge water by talking to water. So if we talk bad to water and we give the, our plants that water, the plants grow less. He researched it and proved it. And, and I actually did this with uh, one of my children. Um, and we had the proof that the water we took re talked really beautiful to and gave it our loving words and our loving uh, empathy and, and energy. That was the water, uh, that was the plant that started growing. The other plants just de deteriorated. He also made visible how water crystallizes. So he showed with a microscope that the water who had a negative vibe would look different and had a different freezing, uh, freezing uh, water crystals than the beautiful water. And you can look him up uh, on Wikipedia. I don't know if, if you have this in your country, but in my country, we, we, we have a say that there are people who have um, green fingers meaning that if they work with plants, the, the, their plants specifically grow a lot better. Now, I wonder what those people are saying to the plants, because plants are nature too, just as water. Plants can hear, or at least feel, and they communicate with one another, but that's a whole different story. Samuel Hahnemann, I knew about him. He's the inventor of homeopathy. You can look him up. Uh, I think he's from German. And homeopathy is, is um, a medical treatment, which in many countries is not uh, allowed, or uh, it is allowed, but it's not in, the, in the, secu uh, the health security system. So you'll have to pay for it yourself if you want treatment or if someone prescribes you a homeopathic uh, medicine. But what it is, is that you uh, have water, you put herbs in it and herbs can cure. You know, the ancient people had no medicines like we have. They cured people with their energy and with herbs. <clears throat> so Hanuman discovered that if you put the herbs in the water, the water will become herbalized, whatever, uh, what's the word? I don't know uh, if there is a word, her, her, her objectified. <laughs> I'm just guessing, new, we're, we're creating a new word here. And the information of the plant would go into the water. Now that is, so far that makes sense, eh? because if you put a tea back in water, it changes in color so you can see the tea is in the water. The same happens when you put herbs in water. But what if you take the herb out? The information, the energy and the information is still in the water. But what he did is he took a lot of water out, put it in a new pot of water, 
added new water, stirred it, and he did this process a couple of times. So if you would measure it chemically, the plant is, is no longer there in the water. The plant information is no longer there chemically, but not on a vibrational level and an energetical level that is still there. If you use one drop of the water, original water, and put it in a new container of water it mi and mix it, the whole new cup of water gets the same energy, vibration, frequency, and information. So that is how homeopathy works. Now, they sometimes add a substance so that the water um, can carry on. Uh, it, I don't know the word in English, but no mildew, mildew and stuff uh, will come in. So that is what homeopathy is. And it's important to know this for the rest of our, uh, our presentation. So this is an Iranian doctor, uh, Batmanjeli. He was prisoned. And in the Iranian prison, people came to him because he was a doctor, uh, because people got ill and he had nothing to cure. He had his knowledge, he had his wisdom, but there was not much he could do because he had no medicines, he had no equipment. The only thing he could say was drink water. Now, this wasn't the clean tap water that we have. This was the water in prisons and many years ago. It was dirty water, but some remarkable results started to happen. People started to cure. And when the doctor was uh, released from prison, he started to research and he started to study this. And most people are dehydrated. We do not drink enough water. It's not just show a visible in our tissue uh, and, and our skin, but also in our body. We're in a constant state of dehydration. Um, therefore, it's important to drink a lot of water, two liters a day. Because if, we, if our body is dehydrated, it becomes uh, an attraction to various diseases. But once it's hydrated again, the body is in its state it's supposed to be, and then it automatically cures itself because we have a self-regeneration um, possibility in our body. Our cells regenerate. The memory in our cells can be removed and the cells can cure themselves. So this is what he studied and researched. But guess what happened? Drinking two liters of water a day and cure whatever you, you have is not a message that many people will perceive and believe because we're brainwashed by the medical industry. And the medical industry started to make him wrong because what if everybody just started drinking two liters of water a day and wouldn't become sick anymore? What would they sell? How would they make money? So he was uh, made wrong over and over and over. He died um, and he was a, a prestigious doctor before he went to prison and before he started uh, writing about his researches and his studies and Unfortunately, when he died, he did not have and get the credits he deserved. Vera Austin, she's, I'm glad there's a woman in this group of remarkable people. She is a crystallography, uh, no, crystallographer, a water uh, a crystallography researcher. That's how she calls herself. And she's from New Zealand. What she discovered is that if you crystallize water in a Petri dish, so you put water in a Petri dish, you put it in your freezer, it starts to freeze. And the moment when it starts crystallizing on top of the water in the Petri dish, it starts to create patterns. It starts to generate specific figures. And she discovered how water 
first of all, can show how much energy it has by the patterns it creates. Energized water, water from the spring, its natural source, has a lot of flowers, ferns, hexagons. So it's beautiful patterns. Tap water looks different. Water from the microwave looks even more diff different. So I never ever put my food in a microwave because you kill all the energy, not, not the substance, you still eat, so you still carry substance in your body, but the energy which is in the food, you kill it with the uh, electric um, radiation. So she shows what radiated water looks like, what tap water looks like, what spring water looks like, but she also shows how water communicates. It has a mind, it has intelligence, it has a memory. Isn't that amazing? And I'll show you some of her pictures. And then we have Rudolf Zantinger. He um, and his science scientists found a tool that has water in its clearest form and energetic, most energetic form possible. And they put that in a crystal piece in a piece of crystal tube because the crystal is also the most energetic state maybe you've heard of the fact that when you put a crystal in water it starts energizing the water well that is what it does and maybe you've also heard that the crystals in the earth communicate together it sent they send energy together and it's my understanding so far, but I'm learning a lot, that this is creating the ley lanes underneath the Earth's surface, energetic lines that communicate with one another. Now, whilst I'm recording this, I'm in Bali. I'm here for the winter. Why would I spend my time in Europe when it's cold and snowy and, and, and dark and rainy? I'm here in Bali and I specifically choose Bali because of the fact that it carries a lot of energy. Now, why is that the case? Because there are a lot of ley lanes crossing the earth underneath the earth's surface. And the place, the area, Ubud, where I'm staying, there's actually some ley lines who cross. But let's go to Rudolf. Um, their scientific research shows that after they have, they have uh, invented and created and built a machine that can reprogram water in its original form without any, any pollution. Remember in the beginning when I gave you the various ways of how water can be polluted, non-visible, because we can see the visible pollution. Yeah, we throw stuff in the water. Um, uh, uh, there's ocean cleanups and there's so that's not the kind of pollution I'm talking about but of course that's also important um they done research that when greenhouses use their water the first of all the productivity of the plants uh, for the for example there's more tomatoes in the plants so they create coherent water when you wa water plants with coherent water, guess what you'll create? You'll create coherent plants. And they've proved that those plants have more energy, that they had more fruits. They also put their tube into a river and it changed the water put it in a basin, they, it changed the substance of water. And that is the, 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 the homeopathy principle where you have just one little bit of water. It, the water is always striving. I told you in the beginning, nature is always striving for its coherent state. So when there is 
a little tiny bit of water coherent, it starts to affect the rest of the water around it. That starts to affect the rest and you'll get a ripple effect. And eventually you'll have a lake with coherent water. Can you understand how this works? And you can look the, those people up. And of course, scientists will say, but their way of uh, research is not approved or whatever. You know, this is always happening between scientists and the people who walk in front of the masses. You know, nowadays we know asbestos creates cancer, but 30 years ago, those kind of people, but different faces and different people already proved that it was bad for our bodies. Now we have found the ways to research it. So now it became true. It was already true 30 years ago. Had we listened to those people, a lot of people would not have died. So listen to these kind of people, people, please. But any, do your due diligence. You don't have to believe me. This is all my um, research, okay? But it's important for the fact and to find out and to know how water works. So this is something I'm using wherever I go. Huh, here, look. I take those blue bottles. I took it in my suitcase to Bali, a blue bottle. It has to be glass. And if I'm traveling light, Oh, I need to make sure it's not falling over. If I'm traveling light, I have these small blue tubes and I add blue solar water. Now, what is blue solar water? Glass, glass, blue glass. Glass is a natural substance. Yeah. It's not plastic. It's chemical. Metal is, it has a different frequency. Glass, ha the blue glass has the original color and frequency and energy of water. So water will, water has re memory, eh? I told you. It, um, it, when it comes back in its blue state, it energizes. If you put a beautiful harmonious image on the water, what Masaru Emoto does, eh? he put words on water. Water also starts to adopt through the glass that energy. And now what happens if you put it outside in the sunshine? Do you remember one of my first slides where I said sun is energizing water? Well, this is what happens with your blue bottle. Put it outside in the water for at least 10 minutes and it gets back its original energy. Now it's tap water, what I put in it. So the chemicals of tap water are still there, but the energy is back in its original state. So the water now is energized and it may or not may not be, I don't know, but it's my feeling that it will harmonize the water in the uh, bottle and puts it back into coherent state. But this is my assumption, people. So I have no proof for that, but it makes sense from what I know about water. And um, uh, if you drink this water like this, it tastes different from the tap water. And before I put tap water in, yeah, but when you then start drinking it, it tastes softer and sweeter. Now, what do I do with this water? I put it in my tea kettle, just a few drops. I put it in uh, the water I water my plants with. I can put it in my washing machine. I drink it like this. Yeah. It's more healthy water, it's energized water. I already knew about this. And I told you this, okay?
Now, water has a mind and water is creative. And I'm going to show you with some of the experiments that Veda Austin did. Remember the New Zealand woman with her Petri dishes? This is a Petri dish where which she had the water listen uh, to the song sailing from Christopher Cross. And guess what you see here in the pattern, in the freezing pattern. So she put it in the dish. She had the music on. Or she was thinking about the song. I think she had the music on. And then she saw it. For her, it's very important that she clears her mind. Whatever she thinks shows up in the water. All eyes on you or on me. That was the song. Look at the pattern in the water. Isn't it remarkable? London Bridge is falling down. Look what she found. Those are close-ups of her Petri dishes. So, you, you know, it's like this. And when you zoom in, you can see all kinds of patterns. I will also show you some of my, of my own. Here she put an egg. You see it. The photo on the right is an egg in the Petri dish in the water. She puts it in the freezer. Five to six, sec six seconds. 23 degrees minus Celsius. And after five to, six sec five to six seconds, you'll have to take the Petri dish out. It starts to show patterns and it showed an egg. And this is what happened when she put her hand on top of the Petri dish. It's remarkable, isn't it? And she, go to our website, Veda Austin, She'll show you a, a database of so many images. And I bought one of her eBooks. If the results every time when I see them, I'm like, man, how is this possible? To me, this shows that water can listen. Water is creative. Water is clever. It can remember. Now, did you know that? And here is my own test. On the left, you'll see normal tap water. You don't see a lot of patterns. And at the same moment, at the same time, I had my hands on this Petri dish and gave it my energy. Now we're going to a story. I'm energizing water. And I'll tell you how I found out that I'm able to do this soon. But look at the difference in the freezing pattern of the water. The left one is purely tap water. The right one is still tap water, but I energized it. And I'm going to show you some close-ups. First of all, you can see the patterns are so much more beautiful, but I'm also going to show you the energy, how it changed. And I'm going to show you a message that the water had for me. Look at the left. The yellow arrow, and you look at the yellow arrow where I enlarge the image. Can you see the fern patterns? It shows energy in water. Look at the red arrow and look on top on the third, the, the third image. Look at the red. You see the, the start of the form of a hexagon. You see a flowery fern pattern. And look at the blue arrow. And look at the blue arrow on the right. I see a shape of a coin. And what you don't know about me, the past two years, well, after COVID, actually, um, all my businesses started to go down and fall apart. I had to liquidate a lot. I had to uh, get rid of my team. I had to um, get rid of my office where I had been working for over 20 years. It was my sacred space, my second home. Um, so that wasn't easy. I took on a very responsible volunteer position as a, the chair of She Credit, which is a credit union where we finance female entrepreneurs. I built that whole organization, but it was not making me money. So the past two years, I have not been making a lot of money because I somehow sensed and felt something else has to come. 
And I tried several things in the meantime, but I always tried them in the familiar way, the 3D way of the masculine action, doing, making it work. This is how you have to do it. This is the steps. This is the process. How I've always done my businesses because that is what I learned. But I felt intuitively that now it was not the way to do it that way. And there's a bit of a gap missing. And that is how I find found out how I can heal water. And I'll show you in the next slides. But here is water clearly communicating to me that this is my new way and means of making a living and making income and making money. And this is... Um, a month ago, barely, yeah, a month ago, just before Christmas, when, when I created these images, I had not made money then, but now I am making money with water healing sessions and I'll show you how this works. So I already have been making money with water the past month. And here is water telling me that this is what I should do. Work with water. So what I also knew, and this is because I had a water sports center and I am a, a white water kayaker by nature. Um, and that, that's, that's my sports. And I'll show you another slide. I knew that when we're on the water, as soon as you see those big dark clouds and you hear the rumble far away, you need to make sure you get off the water as soon as possible. Because water has a big surface, so it's exposed. There, there are no large things around it. Huh? Here in this river, you see the trees, so the fact it, it will not um, clash into the water. It will clash into the trees. But this is beautiful as an image eh? um, to show you what water what uh, a lightning does. So water has a huge surface. When lightning strikes water, it will travel, the energy, the electricity will travel for miles and miles. And if you are within five kilometers of where the lightning strikes the water, you'll still be electrocuted. You'll die. So it's very important to be off the water. Now, if you want to learn something of this presentation, <laughs> this is very important. Yeah, this, this you can look up everywhere. This is nothing spiritual, nothing, uh, it's, it's common knowledge, especially for water sports people. But here it shows how this works. The energy travels through the water. I knew this. And then, this is October 2023. I was on a retreat in Mexico with my coach. And I set the intention before the retreat that when I would be going home, I would know what my gift to the world would be. I would somehow know what my new business would be like. And I went snorkeling. Now, you have to know, 33 years ago, I was working as a tour guide. I was young. I was 25. I was working at, as a tour guide in Mexico, in Cancun. And I took my people every week to Playa del Carmen on a snorkeling trip. And it was beautiful. It looked even more beautiful than you see here on the image. But the coral did not look the same when I went back in October 2023. It looked horrible. It was white, it was gray, there were barely fish swimming around. And I remember all these fish and all these beautiful colors and exotic fish and huge flocks of various kinds of fish circling everywhere up, uh, around the coral. They were not there. I saw a few fishes. You see the little ones underneath me, the, the yellow and black ones. Those are, those are the fishes that I saw, but none, no other ones. And I thought, oh my God, this is how, what, what, what climate change is doing to the world. And I thought, but 
nature has a self-restoring capacity. How is this possible? Why is nature not restoring itself? And I thought, water has a memory. So the water must remember what the coral looked like when I was there, when I was young. And I thought, but what if but water can carry energy from the lightning? I was in the water and all of this knowledge started popping up in my head and all of a sudden I saw the big picture. I saw, but water must be able to heal the coral. But nobody is giving it the instruction. So it is not doing it. And I thought, well, somebody already told me before I went to Mexico, Tineke, your gift on earth is that you are going to heal energetic places on earth. And I was like, what, me? I don't even have any energy. Yeah, that's not completely true. I'm a Reiki practitioner, so I can heal people with Reiki energy. But I didn't use that a lot, so it didn't cross my mind. And I thought... But what if I am to heal energetic places in the world? What is the biggest energy place in the world? Right, water. And I was like, oh my God. So what if I put my hands out and give my Reiki energy, instruct water at the same time to carry my energy to the coral and speak to the coral and the water that they should harmonize and should um, remember what it looked like. And I talked to the self-restoring capacity of the coral. Now this might sound a bit woo-woo to you. I understand that. It sounded woo-woo to me too. When before I knew all this, I always was this pragmatic, systematic, logical thinking, very masculine businesswoman. But it's not all there is, people. Feminine is highly important and it's been suppressed in the world and the feminine is intuition. So I listened to my intuition. I put my hands out, like you see here, the woman, and I started pouring my energy out. And I felt busts and busts and busts of energy leaving my hands. So I thought, wow, something is happening here. And I was talking to the water in my mind, eh? not like this because I was underwater, but water knows. It doesn't need words. And all of a sudden, I looked around me. And what I saw around me is exactly what you see here. Lots and lots and lots of fish came out of nowhere and they were circling around me. And I was like, oh my God, these fish, they feel something. They feel my energy. And I looked at my hands and there were three fishes, one here, one there, one there, piling up on top of each other, this close, this close, a wild animal to my hands. So the energy I was giving the water was more attractive to them than the fear that they have, or it felt more natural to them than to fear me, the human. I was overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God. And I started to lose it a bit. I was like, I can't do this. This is not me. This is not happening. This is coincidence. Um, no, 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 no. This is too big for me. Uh, I'm just Tineke. I, I'm uh, uh, energy places. I, I don't know. But uh. so I swam away. I stopped giving energy, and I was I was completely in my head, or having all these thoughts I just told you about. And then. I thought, you know what? You're always this fearless person. You've conquered the wildest and biggest rivers in the world. And now you're you're scared because you put some energy in the water and some fish respond to it. Come on. So I did it again in another spot and the same happened. 
And then I was, oh my God, I'm onto something. And I did it again in another spot. And the same response happened over and over and over. So I thought, okay, this is me. I have to accept there is a gift that I have. There is something that I do and can do. And with all the knowledge I already had, it started to make sense. And what started to make even more sense is that with water healing, because that is what I was doing, but I can make the water coherent. What if I put what people in that same water? Will it then make their water molecules coherent? I tested it also. I, I bought a little whirlpool, put it outside my house, and I had people book a water healing session with me. I talked to them. We discover what is it that they want to eliminate and that they really want to leave behind what's blocking them to elevate to the next level in their business. And then we'll go into the water and I start energizing the water. Now, I did this with one woman and she was recovering from cancer. She had just finished her last chemo uh, session and she fell asleep when we did this. And I wasn't aware that her mind had not been still and falling asleep had been one of the most difficult things for her for the past one and a half year when she was in that roller coaster. She fell asleep. Now, I called her just before I went to Bali. This is about one and a half week ago. And I asked her, how are you doing now? And she said, Tineke, I'm still so relaxed. But you know what? What coherent water does is it harmonizes the cum communication from your left brain to your right brain. And therefore, all the chit chat moves out. Because a harmonized mind is not a busy, fuzzy, chaotic mind. And I'm pretty sure it works the same for healing of diseases. Now, I wrote it like this deliberately. A dis-ease. Your body is at a dis-ease condition. You are not sick. Your body has a dis-ease. Removing stress, make energized water, coherent state, all of these things and all of these possibilities started coming into my uh, reality. So here she is in my private pool. I asked her, I'm able to use the image, so I'm really gr grateful. And I... And the right image is I energized water. In her case, it was 15 minutes I needed. I put it in a glass uh, tray. I put my hands in there. And when I was talking to the water, I heard she needs the belief in miracles. She needs more relaxation and she needs more energy. So that's what I put in the water. But I also put it on the bottles. Remember, Mas Masara, uh, Masaru Emoto? Give it the energy, but also put it on the flask. I send it to her and I gave her the instruction and she was going to buy a bath herself. I said, put one drop in the water every day. Put one drop in your uh, kettle when you boil uh, coffee or make coffee or tea. Now, I don't know uh, where she is now, but I'm going to call her in a couple of uh, weeks again to find out. And this is my little pool here in Bali. If you are in Bali on holiday until March the 3rd, 2024, do come over for a water healing session with me and you'll experience similar sensation. Now, water responds in a different way because you're different, you have a different energy, you have different needs. But I trust that my energy in the water and the water collaborate and do what is needed for you. And afterwards, when you are in that coherent state, imagine what happens if we then go and talk business. What ideas can come up? I'm in the coherent state because I'm in the water too, together with you, and so are you. 
And I've noticed that my connection uh, when I'm coaching in the water is completely different and my voice is different, my response is different than when I'm coaching like I used to. So I prefer it now. And this is what a role water has played in my life. And you'll see it's not a coincidence that I became a water healing, healer. It was meant to be. So I'm a national champion. I competed uh, water kayaking at world level in Austria, also Euro Cup level. Um, I had a water sports center around white water kayaking. Uh, we did rafting, kayaking, uh, canyoning. Uh, we also eventually added other activities as mount such as mountain biking and uh, climbing and survival. And I had that business for 22 years after I sold it. And then I started mentoring business women, helping them elevate their business. I am now, I'm not so much into white water kayaking anymore. I'm nearly 60. <laughs> I'm now a white water, uh, sorry, a long distance swimmer. I'm training to swim over the IJsselmeer, which is a huge lake in the Netherlands. It's 22 kilometers. And the next goal will be the English Channel. So here you see me last winter in Morocco, uh, where I was training in the ocean. It was pretty cold water. So I then swam with a suit, but I also swim outside. Occasionally I teach swimming classes or aqua gym. I have worked with the Wim Hof method, the Iceman. You probably are familiar with it, what cold water does to the, to the mind and to, to your state of the body is very, very good for you. And I always enjoy jumping into natural water. And I, and it was, I remember it was last year, uh, someone who knew me and we went to the water and I jumped in the water and it, he was quite an intuitive person and he said Tinika what's going on with you you change when you are in the water you are a completely different person you are so at home in the water so it's always been there my connection with the water I was just not the right kind of person to receive that gift and to receive that information can you see that? And this is my star sign. <laughs> and it was fish, Pisces, that revealed my gift to me. Can you see how it came full circle? Isn't that amazing? So this is who I am. Or was or am you know we constantly change and we we constantly have a new being i don't believe in personalities anymore those are habits beliefs uh, uh things that that we've learned i believe in a being who what do you what do you radiate in the moment uh, anyway some business fact facts about me I am in business for nearly 35 years. So, hey, I know what I'm talking about if I do business consulting. I've ha helped lots and lots of women scale and grow their business. Also men. Also male and female combined businesses, couples sometimes. I'm a speaker. Business consultants. I already told you I'm a Reiki energy healer. Now I can add water healing to a uh, healer to my resume. Uh, I'm the author of two business books. And I discovered how the system of doing business and the world around doing business is super, super max masculine. The skills you need to become successful are masculine skills. The feminine in business is highly, highly underrated, but the feminine skills are more important because if you start taking action, which is masculine, from your feminine intuition, you'll take the right actions and you'll get the results you want. But first of all, you'll need to tune in to your feminine energy. And men and women have feminine energy. Now, women tend to have it more. And we all know that 
the average woman is more intuitive, but we have closed that off in the Western world. And in Bali, and I'm going to talk to you about it, I'm organizing retreats, Awaken Your feminist, Feminine Business Power in Bali, where you can join me and where I reconnect you with your feminine energy. And man, if you do that, you'll start to intuitively know things. Men usually call it gut feeling. Women call it intuition. I call it your connection with your infinite being. You can join me and come over here in Bali the 3rd of March until the 8th of March. Six days, full immersive with massages, with Ayurvedic food. We'll, we'll find out what Ayurvedic type you are and you will have the food that matches your body. So there is no energy drained in digesting the wrong food. We'll have massages that will eliminate all the negative information and, and chemicals from your body. We'll do water meditations. We'll do water healing in the pool, but also in the natural waterfall uh, surrounding. Uh, we'll do business masterminds. I'll do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'll give you my Reiki sessions. Man, this is a full immersive week. And it's all to start to reignite your feminine intuition and make your body coherent because that is when you are able to connect with it and if that happens and you'll start to do business from there you'll work on your business during the retreat what will happen then well, I can tell you what happens to me. You'll see it. I've been, the, uh, the past two years, I didn't do a lot. Now, all of a sudden, people are reaching out to me. I've always wanted that to happen, but I always had to do my marketing and my sales, and I didn't like it, and I don't know, many women don't, and they're not good at it. I am good at it, and I didn't like it. And guess what? It didn't work because my energy was not aligned. I did not like it. And what I do like is writing about my experiences, and that and sharing about my experiences and that is what i do now and now people are starting to reach out to me totally different don't you want that don't you also want people starting reaching out to you instead of having to do all the marketing you still need to sell you still need to have sales calls of course so contact me grab your phone Scan the QR code. You'll be directed to my website. You'll see my LinkedIn. You'll see my WhatsApp. You'll see all the details you want. And let me know. Send me a text message or send me a direct message on Facebook or on LinkedIn that you want more information and we'll schedule a call or I can send you the link of the retreat and then you can decide. There's only for six people and a few spots have already been given. And there are at least 10 people considering at the moment. Thank you very much for listening. It's been a ride and I hope you've enjoyed it. And let me know what you feel and what you think about the presentation. Give me feedback on my YouTube channel. Give some comments. I did it once, the presentation, and I told you I've been a speaker. I've been a speaker for 15 years, and I've never, ever had such good feedback on my presentation as I had on this one. One of the comments I'm most proud of, and she said, the most informative presentation I have ever witnessed. Now, in the 15 years that I'm a speaker, I've, I haven't had that. I think if you're an established, well-known speaker, you would love to have these kind of comments. And you know why this is happening? Because I do what I'm supposed to do. It's full circle. I found my gift. I'm in high energy and vibration. Everything now is happening and is playing out in front of me. I set an intention and it's actualizing. 
and sometimes even on the same day. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And bye-bye for now.